how do you tell someone who has ASD, which is autism spectrum disorder, how do you tell if they love you? Well, one of the ways that you can tell, and I'm going to go kind of down the list here on, on the, the article I wrote, is they will want to be in your presence. Um, they may not want to be there in, in your presence as much as, as you'd like, but they, they will show, they will make time for you. Um, so pay attention to that and pay attention to uh, what they, they do to be in your presence. They may not want to be right next to you. They may not want to uh, share as much physical contact with you as you'd like. Um, but they will make it a point to be near you and to be in your presence. It may be across the room. <laughs> and it, they may be wanting to do things that are part of their own special interests. But they will want to be around you. Um, they may also accept physical contact from you more than they, they accept from others. Um, so even though physical contact is sometimes really uncomfortable and, and sometimes painful for, for folks on the spectrum, they may tend to accept it more from you than they do others. My daughter, uh, it's hard for her. And uh, I have some other folks in my life who are on the spectrum that are adults and physical contact can be hard but they will, they understand that physical contact is important for me. So uh, they will accept it from me, even though they will not accept it from others. It may be brief, but um, my daughter's actually told me, mom, I know hugs are important for you. So she'll come to me and we even call it her Aspie hug and it's kind of sideways. Um, but she will accept it for me because she knows it's important for me. And so if you have someone in the spec on the spectrum in your life, make sure you communicate to them that that physical contact is important to you so that they know, make sure they know, and then see, see if they actually accept it from you. That's an important thing to look for. Also, if you ask someone if they love you and they say they do, take it for what it's worth. Don't continue to ask. Don't continue to badger them. Well, are you sure you do? Or, you, you know, well, well, you know, well, how do you love me? You know, if they say, yes, I do love you, then take it for what it's worth. Those on the spectrum are not typically that good at lying. Um, they may try, but they're, they're not typically that good at lying. Um, there may be some manipulative, manipulative lying in, in kids and even adults. Um, there are, there can be some manipulative liars out there if there's some, particularly if there's some other psychopathology there, but for the most part, um, those who are on the spectrum are not good at lying. They're very concrete. Uh, and so if they say, I love you, then you can pretty much take it for what it's worth. They love you. Um, and they will make an effort to show that, show you that they love you. Um, but it will likely be in their own way. So one of the things that you want to do is learn to speak their language. You know, what is their love language? I actually love Gary Chapman's series of books called the love languages he first came out with five love languages for adults and i think that this applies to those uh, on the spectrum as well you might want to check it out gary chapman is his name so what are the ways that your person who is on the spectrum how do they show love you want to pay attention to what do they do do they is it through words is it through actions? Is it through gifts? Is it through deeds, acts of service? Do they do things for you? you? You won't want to pay as much attention to how you feel, how you receive love, as to how they give love. So you want to pay attention to what do they do when they are loving? What, you want to play detective and figure out what is it they do, to, not just you, to, but to others. And if they're doing that thing for you or to you, then they do love you. And then another way that you can kind of know that, that you're loved by someone on the spectrum is do they include you in their special interests? And do they, do they want to include you a lot? Um, because if you're really a special person to them and they want to invite you into their world a lot, um, you now, you know, someone on the spectrum Sometimes they're willing to talk to just about anybody about their special interests, but if they really want to include you and make you a part of their, their um, special interests, 
And now with kids, you know, kids still talk to a wall about their special interests. But um, if we're talking about an adult who has special interests, whether it's, I don't know, whatever, whatever it is, um, reenactment groups or, uh, I don't know, there's so many different kinds of special interests. If they really want to include you and, and get you involved and, and that's, that's part of spending time with you too, then you can know that you're loved. Now, sometimes that's not the way you receive love and that can be hard. So it's important to have those conversations with the, if you're an adult and you love an, an, an adult who's on the spectrum, it's important to have conversations with them about how you receive love. Um, oftentimes those on the spectrum, they need scripting. They need a script and it can be hard. It, it may seem like, oh, that doesn't seem natural. I want them to just know how to love me. Well, that's not how it works always with, with people who are on the spectrum. They need, they, they oftentimes they want us, they want to know how, tell me how I love you. Tell me how you need to be loved. And although it may feel forced and it may feel scripted, you will start receiving the love that you want if you'll tell them how. And you kind of got it. You have to get over your ego and get over your pride and get over that idea that, well, they just need to know me. They need to learn me. They need to figure it out for themselves. It's not that simple for those on the spectrum because they don't pick up on those subtle cues, those subtle social um, things that the rest of us, our brains learn how to notice we have to tell them that doesn't mean that they love you any less. It just means their brains don't pick up on those little cues. So it's okay to tell them how to love you, what you need from them. Is it getting flowers? Is it words? Do you want them to say, do you want them to write you a poem? Do you want them to make you a playlist on Amazon of, of beautiful love songs? Um, do you want them to, um, take you to dinner and pick the, pick the restaurant for you. Well, how, however it is that you feel like you feel loved, write down those things for them and give them a list. And then you will find yourself being loved more often. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. And uh, anyway, give me a call or shoot me an email. If you feel like um, I can help you in any other way. Uh, sometimes I have groups for adults uh, who we sit and we talk about those of us who talk about things that uh, um, go on in our lives. If we love, um, if we have uh, spouses or partners or, or family members who are on the spectrum. And so if you think you might want to be a part of one of those, or I can just help you for individual counseling, um, shoot me an email, give me a call. I'd love to chat. Hope this was helpful.